The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, I'm Lindsay Smith with Real Agriculture, and joining me now is Dr. Sabine Benitza with the University of Saskatchewan, uh, the Crop Development Center. Am I right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Keeping busy over there. Okay. So I want to, we cannot talk about the growing season ahead for pulses without talking about aphanomyces. So let's start there. Do we have any new, exciting, amazing updates that is going to solve our problem of aphanomyces? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> we tried. Yes, I I always feel like the, the messenger of bad news, but aphanomyces is really a tricky one. And uh, so, sort of a, a non-scientist asked me the other day and I, say, I said, well, sort of think about it like a cancer, not that it looks like a cancer, but, you know, scientists have worked for decades on solving cancer and aphanomyces feels like that too. It's just a really long process to find solutions. Yeah, a really difficult one. So, yeah. so walk me through just quickly, um, a quick overview. This is a soil borne disease infects uh, the root. Are we, do we, is it a root rot? Are we that general with yes. it? So, and okay, so it is a root rot. I'm going to guess that means it likes moisture. How does it move and how does it spread? So it is an, an aquatic, and not all root rots are sort of super water loving, but Aphanomyces certainly is. It's an aquatic organism and sort of close relatives actually infect fish and what we you know. Yeah, so it's, it's really adapted to, to water. Um, it is very widespread and it, it has been fairly widespread ever since we detected it because, well, when we started looking more closely, we realized, well, that guy is everywhere, right? And, mm -hmm. and what that tells us is that it probably has been around for a long, long time. And it, I actually think it, it is probably native in our soils. So probably has been around for millions of years. So why are we only noticing an issue with it now? Has it evolved? Has it mutated? Has it gotten, you know, more virulent or something? I think it's just the coinciding of, of certain factors. So um, first of all, I mean, pulse rotate or pulses in the rotations are grown more often, um, sort of sh with, with shorter gaps between peas or lentil, right? So that is one factor. So the host plant is present more often. Obviously, sort of, if you have a whole field with pea, that is much nicer for a pathogen than if you just have the odd little host plant in a mm. diverse meadow, right? So it can reproduce much better as well. And then probably the, the most important factor across the prairies were these really wet years we had around 2000, between 2011 and 2016, where we had all this flooding and super high rainfall and that created so much waterlogged soil that it probably allowed this pathogen to just explode in numbers and because it's a very long living pathogen um, it will take a long long time for that to subside right so with it, it does move with water so that's one aspect but are we as farmers are we moving it from field to field similar? I think about club root with, you know, soil tag carrying its way on the cultivator, on the cedar, on the, or does the same thing happen with aphanomyces that we can spread it? Yeah, yeah, that can happen as well. But as I, as I said, sort of com compared to club root, the big difference is that it's, it is already fairly widespread, mm. which doesn't okay. mean that there are still fields that, that are not infested, right? So um, that is maybe one reason um, if you have fields where you've never grown pulses for example, um, maybe you want to be a bit careful there, make sure that you um, drive with your equipment into these fields first or make sure you wash your equipment if you have other fields where you have, uh, you know, you have hypothalamuses. 